I'm Rob Lukuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Theo Rossi, who co-stars in Emily the Criminal alongside Aubrey Plaza. First of all, mate, I've got to congratulate you on your Indie Spirit nomination for supporting performance. That's exciting. It is. Yeah, that was, uh, we were like, you know, we're like little kids. We've been texting, you know, we're both in, we're all in different places on this production. It's such a small movie. We have this incredible group chat. And when that happened, it was like incredible. And it's the same thing we're going through right now with the Netflix stuff, you know, premiering on Netflix and, you know, going up to number two, I think today, it's just like this little film that could, right. That's the way we look at it. It just keeps happening. Um, and the indie spirit, I really appreciate that. And I accept those words. Thank you. It's really cool. Yeah, it's some killer performances and films in that category. But you know why you're there? Because it's such a damn good movie. Like, it really is. And you're very, very good in it, as you said. So, yay. Thank you. Even if you don't win, it doesn't matter as long as you're there and you're part of the conversation. So that's super exciting. I have to be there. Aubrey will break my legs if I'm not. She will. I, yeah. From what I, I've, I've met her and I know that she does not stuff around. Like she will. Yeah, come after she you. doesn't so suffer you fools. Yeah. And I she, no, she does not. Um, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, so look, let's talk about um, the film because um, anyone who's seen it, I swear to God, Theo, I, I, I know you from other roles and I did not know it was you for quite some time, which means I'm either dumb or... <laughs> You just got the accent and the, the, your facial expressions, your cadence, your your body language so right. He's got a lot of shit going on. He's got a lot of weight on his shoulders. I'm curious what was going through your head when you landed the role, you've read the script, and you're thinking, okay, how am I going to play this guy? Mm. Uh, I I mean, I've been holding on for dear life for like 22 years. So um, I, I don't know. You know, I've always found it really odd when and when actors talk about acting because it's 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 such a weird thing because there's so many different circumstances that have to happen and and then there's so much uh serendipity like things happen that you can't recreate right so with that film i was doing another film this other i'm i'm big in the indies right i love indie films i, I you know as frustrating as they are I absolutely just love everything about them and um and then and then studio films are also great they're just doing completely different things so i was in between two of those i was doing in between i was doing an indie when i spoke with aubrey and john and i would have to go to la the day it ended and then we would do a couple of days of rehearsal and then go right into the film and uh, it was a 20-day shoot emily it was really quick and then I was going to go right to this other one. So I was like, okay, wait a second. How are we doing this? And I was more concerned about my hair was blonde for this other film. And I had to dye my hair the second I landed and somehow go back to like my Middle Eastern roots and my family. And I was like, how do I transfer all this? So it was, I think that there's something interesting in this business, this lunacy of a business that we're in that, that when you're walking on the tightrope, things kind of have to be expedited. So you don't, you, you, you don't really have time. And I think that in the no time, it shows in the film because there's a pace to the film in the 90 minutes. And we were just going. So for me, it was right away, you know, getting in touch with, you know, family members who are in Lebanon, family members who, you know, who had just come over, speaking with people who, you know, having uh, two friends, Jamal and my buddy Mo, read the script, recording it, listening to it all day, every day, all day, every day. And then really going through it and seeing the role reversal of these two characters, like while Yusuf starts here and you think he's this guy, he goes that way and she starts here and goes that way. And like, if we can cross those X's in the right way, we can have something really compelling. And uh, John, we just listened to John and we trusted each other and we love each other. And that's a, as weird as that sounds, it's a rarity. And I think uh, the one thing I think we're most proud of, and I know Aubrey and I and John and I have talked about it, is the chemistry. Cause it's not just the chemistry of Aubrey and I, it's the chemistry of us all. We, yeah. we, we just had a trust of like, Hey, we got one shot at this and we might only have two takes. So like, how do we do this? And, um, and it was just put your head down and go. And uh, so it's just one of those special moments. I don't know if it could ever be recreated, but it was, uh, I'm really excited for it. Aubrey produced it. I would, I would do anything for her. And I knew the second I had my first zoom with her, I was like, I'll, I'll run through a wall for her because she believes in this business so much. Yeah. Um, and believes in film and and what they how the impact they have on all our lives you know you I and everyone else and and we just wanted to make something that we were proud of 
Yeah, absolutely. Totally. And with indie films like this, you have to be scrappy. You've got to like find something within, you know, it sounds so cliche, but it's actually bloody true because if you don't, it's just not going to be good. And yeah. audiences are sophisticated. We can see bullshit. And, uh, you know, so like, for example, when I, I knew nothing about this, this film, I just went into it because I, I was a fan of Aubrey Plaza. I knew who you were and I thought, all right, here we go. And I thought the Yusuf character could have been pretty throwaway just as a way, a, a mechanism for her growth. But no, it's not that at all. You get to do the same growth. As you say, you both do this. He, you do this, this really compelling thing where you, he does a lot of squinting at her where he's trying to suss her out. I think he's actually so guarded and actually not as strong as she is that he's actually, there's actually some fear in there. And I just found that so nuanced and I only noticed it more on the second viewing. So talk me through mm. that nuanced stuff that you were doing that you probably don't notice when you're first watching the film. So a lot of it was in creating who he was, right? So for me, it's like, I have to know everything about them. Like, you know, not just what do they eat? Like, you know, what what music did they listen to between the ages of 12 and 20? Because those that's the music that forms our life. What was the culture that they were exposed to? What's the education level? You know, what's the relationship with his mom? What's the relationship with his family? Does he need the job? Does he have health insurance? Like, I have to go down that entire rabbit hole in my own personal uh, research of the character so then I can lean on it. So it's like, yeah, he wouldn't eat this or he wouldn't wear that. And he wouldn't. So there's just notebooks upon notebooks. You know, I have a bunch of them around here for this movie where it's like, then I can reference them in the playlist and the music I listen to. And then that's informed in my responses to her and, and how I'm looking at her. And I looked, I always, with Yusuf, I looked at Emily as a chance to reveal who I truly was as Yusuf. And he was sussing her out to see if she was that person. And then when he realized that she just wanted something better in her life, she just didn't know what it was, like, what do you want to do? He knew what he wanted to do, but he, he, he needed her to almost be the key to unlock that in him because he has never said that to anyone else. Even the version he gives his mom is not the version he's giving Emily. So she's just a vessel for him to become like his real self, not to be like all esoteric and weird, but we're all looking for that, to be our authentic self to someone else. And I think that it was also kind of true in Aubrey and I, like when we met, it was like we were so simpatico on our beliefs of like this business of like, man, we just like, we have such a love of film and the history of film and how, you know, again, what it's done for us personally, that it, it started to bleed into both of them. So I think that those nuances, and I'm really fortunate, is John just knew how to grab them. He saw what was going on with us, and he's like, just do that, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever that is. Yeah. That's fascinating, because, like, when um, Emily says, I just want to be free towards mm. the beginning of the film, I felt like yeah. that's exactly what Yusuf wants. He just yeah. can't say it. Because she's defiant. She will call people out. She will go after the guy who's robbed her and put a knife to, or put this taser to their neck. He won't because he's just, for whatever reason, he's just not, he, he's more despondent than she is. And so I, yeah, I really love that. He wants to be so free. He wants to take her upstairs and put the ice on her face. I, mm-hmm. I kept thinking, why are you doing this? Just leave her alone. No, no. He, I think, did you, did you agree that, this character saw her as his way to maybe move forward uh, because he was so kind of stuck. Yeah. I mean, listen, the greatest relationships we have in our lives and we're here for such a short time is like the ones who are doing things that we aren't, we can't do. They bring something about us, whether it be the funny friend or the caring friend or the, you know, the friend who has something or the, the relationship, the significant other who has something that you don't. And those are usually the best relationships because you offer something and they offer something you learn from them and they learn from you. And it kind of goes back and forth. It doesn't happen like that all the time. A lot of times we surround ourselves with people who are extremely similar and there's no real growth and there's no, uh, you know, something to, you know, um, uh, learn in a way because it's just the same thing. I think his attraction to her from the beginning was he knew there's something about her that he wishes he had. And then she is with him looking at him and thinking, 
he knows things to potentially get me to be free. So it's like their, their, their relationship is slightly transactional in a way, whether it be emotionally or, you know, so when you see that it's incredible because it's, it, they're revealing things about each other as they go, they're revealing more and more. My, one of my favorite moments in the film, and it was such a simple moment that I didn't think about until I actually watched it was um, when she compliments on the office. And yeah. he says, I fucking hate this place, you know, but he laughs because it's such a simple thing. And he says, I decorated this whole thing. And she's like, oh, yeah. And they have like a real moment of like where they are in their lives and what's happening. And it's so basic, but it's so real. And I just remember when we did that, it was like one of the first times where I was like, wow, this is something's going on here. And you just don't get that much, you know, when you're, when you're doing this kind of thing. And um, I think that that's, I think that's why people are responding. I think there's a couple of reasons why people are responding. I think if you made this movie 10 years ago, we made it 10 years from now, it'd be the same thing, right? It's someone who is up against it and just has, just doesn't want to take it anymore. Right. And, but I think at the end of the day, while that's amazing, what, re- what all great movies hang on is the relationships yeah. of the people and who they are and how they are and um we just wanted to make a real movie yeah when he says i did the lighting design and he has you do you do this all funny little squint um and i just thought immediately okay they're gonna get together now because like that that's exactly what she wants to hear <laughs> that ridiculous sardonic wit yeah. that, um really works what really kills me man and i'm just looking at you now and i'm thinking about you seth and i'm thinking about how she had to leave him like in the car yeah it's like she had a journey and sorry man but you're you're on your own i felt that was so freaking heartbreaking <laughs> i'm just curious how, how you felt this is the character you have to love this character and and he doesn't end up well unfortunately that's well life. well that's the crazy thing is that is only in the edit we filmed something different really yeah yeah and i don't want it there's no reason to go into it because, because it doesn't matter there, but there what? is there there is a version that they're together at the end. I'm I'm flawed, and I never. I'm always so prepared, man. I had yeah. no idea. So there's a version where there's a version where he's on the beach. Are you serious? Yeah, there's a version where he walks in the back door when she's giving that speech. Oh, uh, that's the ver- yeah. well, okay. Now, I'm, when I speak to John next week, that half the interview is going to be about that choice. Why? <laughs> no, because it's a simple reason why. It's Emily's story. It's yeah. her POV. Everything has to be from her POV. We are on her journey. And the greatest films, my favorite films, are when we follow that journey. And we have to see her. And we have to, we have to give our due to the audience. We have to let the audience think of what could happen. Did he survive? Did he not survive? Did she go back? Is she going to get in trouble there? Is she going to wind up like him? I saw somebody say that. I thought it was wonderful. Where It's like, okay, she's him in the beginning of the movie. Wow. So if you fast forward, is she going to meet her Emily, you know, and, and reverse? And then she's in the car, you know? So it's like, you have to let the audience just like we're doing do that because our greatest films, our greatest experience with theater is when we... It's I call it the parking lot walk. When we walk out with our mate or a friend and we go, what do you think? What do you think happened? Where do you think he went? What do you think she did? And it's like, we want that. And that's what I, I know, John and Aubrey, and like what that was about. But yeah, we had some other stuff and I thought it was, it's perfect because everything happens the way it's supposed to, right? It's like, you know, I've had that experience on a bunch of things, you know, it, I remember when Juice died on Sons of Anarchy, there was a totally different thing written. And there's like these different things that you, it's almost like a what if, like a Marvel what if, where you go, oh, yeah. what if? But <laughs> but it's good to think about it. But at the end of the day, I love that, Emily. I love that lightning strike. I mean, you want to talk about serendipity in a movie, that lightning strike happened, which was crazy. You know, yeah. that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> you yeah. can't put that in post, that's real. And then having her there, she has to wrestle with that now. She has to go to bed at night. There's two moments when you're truly with yourself in this life. That's when you close your eyes before you go to sleep and you have those moments and when you're in the shower, right? You have two moments where you're truly alone 
Yeah. And she has to do that every time to think about Yusuf. And that's amazing to think about. Yeah. That shower time is so profound, <laughs> right? Profound. The stuff that it goes through your mind. You know what? I um when I'm thinking about the film before a few days ago, I was like, she hasn't come full circle. She, she's only just beginning. Now she mm. is the new Yusuf. And it will just keep going. And that's what I that movie in my head. I, you're right is way more interesting than me having been spoon fed with a happy ending where you go sailing off into the sunset that would be actually yeah. really boring <laughs> it's boring at the end of the day while it's compelling to our heartstrings and to yeah. think like you know we all we all have been taught the narrative of the happy ending but at the same time sometimes things just are and you have to go this is we don't know and when we watch good stories I want to not know I don't need the lunchbox to close. I don't have to finish the meal and I don't need it handed back to me. What I need is to go, hmm, what else is in there? What else is going on? And then maybe I never find out, but that's where the imagination kicks in. And that's what good art does, right? You know, you and I can look at a, a Dali painting and think two totally different things. And I think that if, if you can reflect art with film in the same way, because film is art, but I mean, if you can look at it like the way you look at a painting and have two different versions of what you just saw, that's kind of gotten less and less in film, right? It's it's pretty established what we're looking at. You know, there's really they're they're not they're non they're undebatable, right? And um, I think that this film is debatable in the way you see what happens to Emily, because does she wind up in a car like Yusuf, or does she become a criminal mastermind? Does she get arrested? Does she get uh, uh does she get accountability for Yusuf? You know, does she get evict convicted of Khalil? Did they transport her back to the states? amazing that we even get to even think about those things right and this year particularly with so many films like that where i've had to really start to grapple with my own imagination like tar and bardo and this and after sun and that's that's what i'm looking for in cinema and so i'm so thrilled that we get to do it and my final question is, is you touched on it very briefly at the beginning but you get to do a scrappy passion project where you've made the audience think and you've grown as a performer and then it gets to drop on Netflix so then everybody's going to see it. Is that something that you are thrilled about in this industry that we've got platforms like Netflix these days? Yeah, I mean, my predominant employer is Netflix. I'm doing yeah. films for them right now. I've been working with them, you know, pretty hardcore since Luke Cage, you know, um, and I absolutely love everyone there. Uh, here's the thing, you can't, there is a there is a way where you can love both, right? I don't know. I've never really understood this thing of like, you know, people yelling at the clouds, you know, you're not going to change it. It is what it is. And how amazing is it that you can get such incredible stuff at the palm of your hands on your 85 inch TV or whatever people have nowadays. And then at the same time, you can go to theater and see something, right? It's fantastic. I've had so much respect for Netflix because technically Netflix started a long time ago changing my life. If you think and go back, seasons one to three of Sons of Anarchy were just on FX. And yeah. this was pre-Netflix pre making their own shows. Mm. And then they got Sons of Anarchy on the platform and season four premiered. And it had season one, two, three, and four, but season four, and it came on Netflix. So season one, two, three dropped on Netflix, and then our season four premiered on FX. Season four was when Juice took off as a character. Yeah. And it was really that entire storyline. So our audience like tripled. Mm -hmm. So it, it lined up exactly with where my character was going. So I've always looked at, especially with a film like this, we premiered at Sundance, which didn't happen. It was virtual. So we were all like, we were about to go to Sundance and we were like, oh, our movie's doomed because nobody's going to see it because it's virtual. And then it just started to pick up a little. John and I were going all over, going to these film festivals. Aubrey was going everywhere and we were just trying to get the word out. The critics really helped us tremendously, tremendously. And then there was a buzz. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of buzz, but it was in a limited, limited release. So then it came, so now it's okay, there's that version of the movie. So that's Sundance version, then the limited release. Then there's the version of it went to VOD. You can buy it. Yeah. And people still, hey, this is a great movie. I heard the critics like it, but, and it's got all this life. Then it starts getting nominated for all these different things. People are like, man, I really need to see that. And then it happens right around the holidays to drop on Netflix. And it's so it's like this movie has had life 
for almost a year, it feels like, and it continues to have a life. And I think that we love that because my favorite films are evergreen, right? That they're just around. They just seem to always be there and you always dip in and out. They're not just like weekend warriors. And um, so the Netflix effect, and we're, we're in it right now, meaning it just came on a few days ago. Uh, I've gotten more text messages and messages and voicemails. And while I'm here filming from people who are very close to me who haven't seen the film and now they've seen it. Yeah. So they didn't go out and get it on VOD. They didn't go to the theater and they didn't see it when it was on Sundance virtual. They're seeing it now. And these are people that have, I've known for 25 years. So I think that that is absolutely incredible. And that's the story people should tell when they talk about streamers is they should tell that story of a film like this, because that is incredibly helpful for everything that we're, because at the end of the day, like Aubrey and I always say, we just want you to see it and then yeah. tell us you like it or don't like it, but just please watch it. That's right. Everyone I speak to, it's not like the worst thing that happened to a project is if just it's, it's ignored and it just disappears at least. Especially really good ones. I mean, right? I, I've watched movies that no one has seen. And I'm like, have you seen this? They're like, I never even heard of it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so good. You have to see this film. And they're like, I don't, where do I, I don't. <laughs> and then, the and day. then you do, and then you do these giant things, you know, on streamers. And sometimes they just, they're number one and they're great. And then they just go away and drop into the ether. So it's like, maybe the future is all of it. Yeah. Maybe it's all, all of it. it. Yeah. You can have all of it. And maybe it is the limited release, the festival run, the, you know, the VOD and then the streamer. Maybe that's the run of, yeah. of the way to do it. So for me and, and my living in the indie world now, you know, predominantly, it's definitely the way that I tell the producers and anything I'm producing to kind of go because you can stay in the conscious of people for a lot longer. I told Aubrey this morning, I texted her, I was like, hey, we should just start doing drive throughs with it. Like go to like, like, like uh, drive-ins, I said, do like drive-ins somewhere. And let's say, we'll just go travel around the country and like show Emily in like back parking lots, yes. you know, to get people to watch it. Because that's all we want is people to see it. Absolutely. Theo, thank you so much for your time. Congrats on a beautiful performance in Emily the Crown. Well, thank you so much for your time. That means a lot. And uh, I really appreciate everything you do. And let's just keep championing film. That's what we do. 